Howdy folks, today we're going to be going over wire splice soldering, you know, connecting uh, two or more wires together. And I'm going to be showing you the four basic methods that I have used for many years successfully. By all means, these aren't the only ways to splice wire together, but they're the ones I'm the most comfortable with. Basically, we're going to be taking them in order. We're going to be doing a lap splice. Uh, we'll also do a lap with a pigtail. Uh, we're going to be doing a lineman splice, a strand splice, and a butt splice. And depending on the size of wire you have, the length of wire you have to work with, and the application will largely dictate what uh, splice type you use. There's not one perfect splice for every wire and application. We're going to be starting with the smaller stuff first and working to the big stuff. We've got, um, this is 26 gauge, small servo type wiring. Uh, we've got 16 gauge automotive here. Uh, I've got some 14 gauge silicone or test lead type wire and some big 10 gauge and each one will have a different uh, method of joinery here. You know this splicing is all done on stranded wire. Uh, th all the same methods could be used for single strand except for the strand splice which when we do it you'll see why that is. So we'll start with the uh, lap splice. Lap splices are pretty much my favorite uh, method for connecting short small wire. They're great when you don't have much length to work with and they're also a really nice method to join wires onto components such as LEDs. If you wanted to uh, solder a, a resistor onto a wire, a lap joint's a great way to do it. Solder components right to each other, or like a current li limiting resistor onto an LED. Lap joints work great for all those purposes. So specifically for smaller wire, again this was 26 gauge. So I'm just going to solder these two little servo uh, wires together. And first thing I do is tin the ends. You want to strip. Again, you don't need much length. There's probably maybe only a couple of millimeters of uh, stripped wire here. And I like using these helping hand things. You can try to align them. Uh, once you've got them tinned, but I generally hold, I keep one held in one of the uh, helping hand clips and I hold hand hold the other one. You've noticed on the helping hands that I've put heat shrink um, tube over the jaws just to protect the wire a little bit. Found if it's just the metal it'll uh, it'll can sometimes pierce the insulation. Now generally you're gonna want to insulate your connector obviously or your joint with heat shrink. So you have to put your heat shrink over first because once you solder it, of course you can't get it back on. And we'll just get uh, solder out here. And just get a little bit on the tip, make sure the tip's clean first. And you just gotta touch it. And then just make sure it's nice and smooth and then you just, you know, you would put your heat shrink over and shrink it. Now the other thing we're going to do here, we're going to do a lap joint with a pigtail. And I'll often do these when I'm connecting two, uh, three wires or more. So let's say we wanted to make a Y harness here. So we've got, this is actually, we'd want two females on this end, not males. But you get the idea, like, you know, here's a commercial Y harness. You've got the male end that plugs into the receiver and then two female ends that two servos or other components would plug into. So what we would do here, we'll just get out our wire strippers. So we'll strip a little extra length here, maybe, I don't know, quarter inch or so, which is maybe what, about four millimeters, five millimeters. And then we'll pigtail these together, twist them together Now we'll tin that really quick. Now I'll just chop a little bit off. So now we've got that and say we were going to solder this on then you would just do another lap joint there and you'd be done there and you'd have those connected then and you do the same for all the others. One thing with lap joints, if at all possible, 
So you had a two conductor wire. And this is this is actually the same for any splice. So let's say we've got a two conductor wire and we want to join, you know, to another two conductor wire. What you would generally do is you would have your joint offset. If that makes any sense. So you don't have two joints resting right against each other. You know, you've got you're going to have heat shrink obviously over top of them, but if they were resting right together, you would have this, you know, say we had two joints, you'd have a quite a big blob of there'd be a large area of heat heat shrink and you'd have this big bulge in your wire whereas if you can offset them that keeps that bulging down a little bit if that makes any sense so I guess uh, we're on to a lineman splice now next up is the good old lineman splice this is probably the most uh, familiar to most people the drawback with lineman splices is when you need a lot of length of wire to do them correctly you need you know we've got a good about an inch here of stripped wire it works best on solid wire, uh, not stranded, but you know, if uh, the 16 gauge stranded uh, automotive wire is fine, you know, it wouldn't work with anything like high flex silicone. The bigger you go, the worse it gets because you've just got hundreds and hundreds of strands of wire and there's just no way to keep them together. So when I do a lineman splice on stranded wire, I like twisting it together. You don't have to, I just find it easier to do. So it doesn't fray apart. And basically you just cross it in the middle and then you start twisting it. So you've you basically put a little hook so both ends you know are kind of hooked together like that and then you twist them against each other. You're generally going counterclockwise. And ideally you would have, especially if you have um, solid or single strand wire, you generally just you make sure that, you know the end of the wire is nicely flattened against the strand. Because you don't want any little wires sticking up to uh, punch through your heat shrink. Obviously you'd want to put your heat shrink on <laughs> before you do this. Now these are really strong. I mean, even like this, this is a strong connection. You know, you could just put heat shrink on and be good. But, you know, I would much rather solder it. Let's go to 350. This is a little bit bigger of a wire here. And we'll just solder it up here real quick. With lineman splices, the industry standard, I think, for it to pass code. Um, I believe you have to have at least five or six wraps, but you know, this is just home RC hobbyist type stuff. But that's what you're looking for when you're done. Uh, and I can pretty much guarantee you, you could try to pull this apart, and the wire will probably break somewhere. Um, instead of the splice giving out super strong and reliable splice but you need the length to do it. The good old stranded splice now as the name would apply this only works with stranded wire here we've got some 14 gauge high flex silicone this is a little harder to do because there are so many strands and you don't want to twist these together when you strip the ends the nice thing with this method is you don't need much length so again, it's kind of like the lap joint in that respect, and it will work on larger wire. You know, the reason you generally wouldn't do a lap joint with these is because when you tin them together, you've got these great big ends that are sticking out, you know, where there was small wire, they sit relatively flat in relationship to the thickness of the insulation. So you don't get this big, harsh bulge, whereas these you would. So that's where this... Uh, strand splice comes in. So basically you want the strands quite loose. In fact if you want you can even try to fan them out a little bit. Don't want them uh, you know twisted together at all. Now the idea is you kind of just butt them up and press them together 
so all the little strands you know kind of mesh together and then you squeeze it you can try to try to twist those strands I'm not a huge fan of this process this um, splice but I have used it and it works well so once you get them together let's just hold them in our helping hands make sure they're aligned nice and straight the, the hardest part with this is making sure all the strands are sitting flat before you solder it I'm gonna dial this up actually go up to 370 Everything's nicely saturated throughout. Again, you want to have your heat shrink on before you make the connection and the solder job. So, yeah, it's not... You'll see it looks okay in this, but I didn't get underneath it. So, ideally, if we wanted to do this right, we'd have to uh, get the back side too. That's, the pro that's what's kind of hard with high flex silicone wire. You, re you have to pretty much go all the way around it with for the solder to penetrate to get it on all sides because it just acts as a huge solder wick. Okay, so that's a little bit better. <laughs> but as you can see the it's kind of a messy job now admittedly I rushed here but the main thing is there's no sharp edges there's no loose strands of wire sticking out that would pop through your insulation your heat shrink or electrical tape however you want to insulate it and it's strong there's no doubt that uh, that's a strong joint well, for big wire I like using a butt splice and as the name suggests you're butting your two connections right up to each other. Now to do that you need some type of sleeve. I'm sure most people have heard or seen of butt connectors. Those are those uh, little connectors that you put over a wire end, you crimp it. Um, but this is a soldering method. Now what I use is I've often, you know, most of us have bullet pins lying around, old ones that we've used or whatever. You take a female bullet and I just put, uh, I use my little um, you know get a little pipe cutter and I just cut the bullet off so you've got you know a, a little sleeve you could also just go to the hobby shop and buy that thin walled brass tubing of the right diameter to do this if you know how to solder a uh, you know a bullet pin type connector onto a wire this is essentially the same thing you're just using um, you're soldering both ends of the wire into the full length of the bullet the female end of the bullet so what I'll generally do is I'll just start with the wire usually in the upright orientation like this so I can get the solder and melt it right into the connector you want the wires tin before you even start this Just let that cool a bit. Bullet. Okay. Again, tinning, having the ends tinned beforehand, very important. Just get some solder on the tip and on the wire. So we've got good heat conductivity into the bullet. And let that sink right in. Need a little more solder, I believe. There we go. Hold it nice and still. And we'll just have a look at this. So, you, know, you could clean that off. Um, there's some rosin from the flux on there. 
Uh, you could leave that on though when you put your heat shrink tube on, that'll help glue the heat shrink over. But uh, you could clean it off with isopropanol or brake clean, something like that. But that's how I do all my big wire if I want to, you know, solder big wire together. One little tip on the helping hands, well, I remembered it. These things generally slide all over the place. So what I like doing is getting those little, uh, you know, their little stick-on rubber feet. These are really soft and really soft sticky ones. And that helps this thing from moving around as you're, you know, putting force. With the small wire you don't notice it, but on the big wire you do. So that's my four little methods of uh, splicing wire together. Use it if you think it'll help out. Cheers folks, have a good one.